is that the phrase at the very end of this gospel, that Jesus is within the bosom of God or within the heart of God, is also the description of the beloved apostle, John. But John starts this gospel off with the genealogy of Jesus, not like Matthew's genealogy of Jesus, which went through mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, all the way back to Abraham, but starts with where Jesus comes from in a divine genealogy. There's not much of it, except it's one that blows our minds because we have to step out of time to understand where Jesus came from. So before time, God was, God is, God will be after time. The Word was with God. The light was with God. You'll hear this in our creed. Light from light. God from God. True God from true God. What John is trying to establish is that the Word of God, the Christ, whom we call Jesus in time, was always with God. So it rattles us a little bit. John is trying to connect us, to plug us into something that we can understand. And that comes in this phrase. The Word was made flesh in the Gospel. Why? Jesus brings to us a message of grace, that's love, and truth, that's God's will. A message of love and truth. But it's a message that we can receive and see. So when the sun is at this uh, winter sky, and it's at a certain angle, it's very bright. And if you look directly into it, you're blinded. You're blinded any time you look directly into the sun. We're blinded when they take, no, thank God, they don't use these things much anymore, but remember those old flash cube cameras that we had? <laughs> Those things put out, I don't know what, 50 billion, trillion, you know, they're still flashing somewhere in space. You remember walking around and being blinded by those things? The light was too bright for us to see. Everybody that talked about Jesus, or talked about God before Jesus, was trying to describe something they had never seen, never been with. It is Jesus, the Christ, who is able to tell us what God is like. Because Jesus, the Christ, is able to live in that light that is too bright. But it is through Jesus' humanity that he is able to tell us a little bit about the light. Because if we were to look into the light, we would be blind. God loves us so much. That's what this beginning gospel talks about. God loves us so much to bring us love and truth that God wants us to be able to hear it in a way that we can understand it. In a way that we won't be blind or deafened or just have all of our circuits blown because we're not designed for that. There's a limit to what we can take in. The smartest of us, the most perceptive, the most spiritual, the most mystic. God runs <laughs> way beyond our ability to perceive. But God loves us so much that he sent his son, the word that we could hear. The person that we could see and feel and touch and hug and walk hand in hand with through the struggles of life to us to give us grace and truth. God loves us to speak to us. Now this analogy is going to limp from the very beginning, but imagine what you could say if you were trying to talk to your dog 
or your parakeet, or your cat. Cats are not going to listen anyway. So. <laughs> Our little doggy, we kind of think he talks to us, and we kind of talk to him. And I think there's some level of communication. But you know what? His little brain isn't wired to hear us. We can only go so far. It's a limited conversation. That's kind of like where we are with God. That's why it was so important to God to send us a messenger in the way that we could hear and listen and speak to. Imagine Christ out of time, the Alpha and the Omega, the Word, light from light, God from God, true God from true God, saying, yeah, let me step out of all of that and step into time and into limitation." into not being able to be this cosmic divine presence. The love that is behind Jesus coming to us is magnificent. And the message, the message, <coughs> let me tell you, God, your Father, I know you don't know what to call God because you get nervous. So let me put it to a way that you can understand it. How do you need to relate to God? Just say Father. Or even better, Abba. Like Daddy. You mean I don't have to call him most, 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 most holy, 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 Lord God, heavenly, holy, 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 No. Just get away from some of that. Call him Okay, and then, well, you know, just know that God loves you. You, individually, not generically. Oh yeah, I love all of them. No. You and you. Individually. God loves you, beloved daughter, beloved son. God loves you. Yeah, but I sometimes do bad things. Uh, get over it. Okay, just get over it. Okay, all right. You know, I know you can't follow the law. You tried for 2,000 years. It did not work. So we're going to do it a different way. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love the best out of you. I'm going to love you so much your life is going to blossom. I'm going to love you so much that your only response back to me, freely given, is one of saying thank you. And let me love also. That's all I have to do is love? Uh-huh. Well, what about all the lo love? Love. Here is God's message to you. Father, loving you, asking you to love one another so that someday when we all step back out of time, we are going to be all together as one. All all of us. That is the word of God in language that we can hear, in a heart that we can relate to. This is Emmanuel, God among us. God among us.